You forced your eyes open, the obnoxiously bright yellow of the living room walls blessing your sight, along with chairs, cushions, lamps, and coat racks strewn across all sides of you. Now you remember. The Baku Squad, followed by the children, had built a giant pillow fort in the living room the night before, and you vaguely remember joining them with Hanta after your conversation with your Aunt Iri. You didn't remember knocking out Cold, however, and you certainly didn't remember falling asleep beside Hanta, who, for once, wasn't the early bird, still lightly snoring beside you. Not wanting to disturb the man, you tried to get up and entangle yourself from the remains of the collapsed pillow fort, but you weren't so slick when another arm hooked itself around your waist, pulling you back. You ended up face first into Hanta's chest with a small squeak, hearing a groggy, no, and stay, as he nuzzled you further into him. He smelled of orange peel and fresh linen, an ideal scent that slowly awoke your senses and made you acutely aware of your current predicament. Han, you mumbled through his shirt. Can we have things to do today? You lightly scratched his back, attempting to get him up, but he only sighed as he muttered tired gibberish into your hair. Hmm? He sighed again, pulling away enough to mumble a clearer response. Baby, if a morning can wait five more minutes. Baby, he said in that husky morning voice you thought would never have an effect on you. You were flustered, admittedly. Maybe he wasn't conscious enough to know what the hell he was saying? But babe, the morning might be able to wait, but my bladder won't, you quipped, playing along for the hell of it. You were greeted by a tired yet amused smile from Hanta as he finally opened his eyes to peer at you, giving in and pulling one of his arms away. Go on then. <laughs> I'll be up after you. He laughed, rolling to his back as his free arm draped over his eyes. You patted his chest with a snicker, flipping the fallen blanket off you and walking upstairs to the guest room's connected bathroom. The soft click of the door closing behind you brought your thoughts and emotions out of hiding, the isolation of the bathroom like an open cage for everything to run free. Flirting with Hanta wasn't anything new. Pet names weren't anything new. Cuddling wasn't anything new. But after the emergence of these feelings, there's a lingering sensation that spoke louder than a simple platonic relationship. You were scared your expectations would skyrocket, and you would begin to see your fake relationship with Hanta as a real one. Sure, the thought may have crossed your mind once, twice, three times in the past year, but you always force those feelings down. It was nothing but wishful thinking. A mirage of emotions with the man who was nothing but a friend. You weren't the only one lost in thought. Just a floor below you was Hanta, now wide awake, cleaning up the mess of blankets and pillows. Haphazardly folding a sheet, he slowly processed your interaction, both yesterday and this morning, and roses quickly bloomed on his cheeks. It had only been a day of you faking your relationship, but Everything just seemed so natural and genuine. When Kay approached you in the ice cream parlor, Hanta's body reacted first. When he went on about his feelings to your aunt, his mouth spilled his deepest thoughts before he was able to stop it. He had been so in love with you and kept it in for so long that finally letting out those emotions, even if it was for show, felt good. Isn't it about fucking time? As Hanta finished folding the blanket, he turned in time to catch an orange thrown his way. By the kitchen entrance stood Katsuki biting into an apple, already dressed for a casual outing. Good morning to you too, Katsuki, laughed Hanta, taking a seat on the couch and peeling the orange. And don't give me shit for sleeping in this once. That wasn't what I meant, Flatface. I'm not an idiot like the rest of you, the blonde remarked throwing himself on the other side of the couch. I know how you feel about the shit stain upstairs. Hanta froze. What do you mean? Don't you fucking play dumb with me. I've known you like them since we got to high school. Well, the jig was up. 
Katsuki may not care for relationships, but when he does, he easily picks up on the smallest details in someone. So much for keeping his crush on you a secret all these years. <laughs> Alright, you got me. Hanta laughed away his defeat, arms up in surrender. I am completely, utterly, or as you would say, disgustingly, in love with my best friend. But hey, newsflash, I don't want to tell them. I don't want to admit that I'm taking this fate dating thing as a chance to make them fall for me. He dropped the half-peeled orange on the coffee table, exasperated hands slicking back his fringe and lacing together on the back of his neck. He was emotionally stressed, to put it simply, and he slowly began to doubt if his attempts of winning your affection was a good idea. I only pretended to be their boyfriend because their aunt thought we were together. But when I say I accidentally mistook us as an actual couple, when I accidentally referred to them as baby this morning, he trailed off, holding his breath when he remembered your reaction. Flushed cheeks against the morning light shining from the window, the playful smile that responded back to his uncalled for pet name. The way you fit against his frame just screamed. Perfect. Hanta's arms dropped from his neck, the breath leaving his lips as he regained his composure, reining in the remainder of his pride. He turned back to Katsuki with a lopsided grin. Ugh, never mind. I think you know. This day was the peak of your visit, and both you and Hanta refused to let your prior emotions stop you from enjoying yourselves with your friends and family. But be that as it may, you still felt yourself slipping back into your thoughts. Hanta manned the wheel, close behind your cousin's car as you left the mountain town of your childhood home. It was time for the long-awaited horseback riding, along with some lake activities that your family had planned prior to your arrival. The familiar rhapsody of Queen's Somebody to Love played as you hummed along, gaze directed to the splashes of green whizzing by, the van climbing the slowly ascending road. Your destination was in the heart of the mountains, where sat a park lodge, a community of cabins encompassing a wide expanse of water. As you drove further into the lodge, you found a fenced area where they kept horses, and you could hear the noises of excitement from your friends in the back seat. Hanta found a parking space, and by the time you and your friends were ready, everyone was making their way to the stables. You kept a short distance from Hanta, even when your friends entered the fence, when you were assigned your own horse, and when you left the stables and down the designated trail. Your guide led you around the lodge, around the outskirts of the lake, before bringing the group through the trees. You took in the rushing leaves from above, the sound of horseshoes hitting the dirt road, and a light breeze blowing through your hair. You took it all as a temporary distraction from your worries, even when Denki sputtered at cobwebs and loose branches smacking his face, and the evident sound of Katsuki's irritation when his horse kept stalling. Before you knew it, an hour had passed, and only when you saw the lodge in the distance did you finally take into account the slowly growing pain on your butt. Holy shit! You heard Mina groan as one of the guides helped you off the horse. Ugh, if I knew Bumpy Roads hurt that much on horseback, I probably wouldn't have done it. Oh stop, it didn't hurt that much, you said, despite the aching of your lower back. She gave you an unimpressed look. With mildly aching muscles, you met up with the rest of your family by the docks, and you noticed some of them were already floating in the lake. You joined your aunts and uncles, who had a picnic set a ways away from the lake. Some of your friends had run off to change into water-appropriate clothing, and you were going to join them after resting your body and snagging a strawberry or two. During a pleasant conversation with your uncle, you saw Hanta waving you over, a paddleboard in hand as he stood by the docks. You hesitated for a moment taking in the sight of the raven-haired man who wore nothing but swim trunks, allowing you a perfect view of his bare skin. No. Stop. You finished the last of your snack as you stepped off your clothes. Thankfully, 
you were already wearing a bathing suit beneath your regular outfit as you sauntered over to join your friend. Hanta stood on the board, paddling towards the middle of the lake as you sat cross-legged in front of him, refusing to even look in his general direction. You instead looked towards the lake, where Mina had snagged an inner tube with Denki holding on to the side of it. You could just make out the figure of Katsuki floating on his back, with Eijiro latched onto your cousin's kayak, shouting something towards the explosive blonde to where Katsuki flipped him off. I wonder, Hanta said suddenly, catching your attention. What would you do if I flipped this board over? You immediately turned to him, a disconcerting look in your eyes, your prior nervousness forgotten and thrown into the lake. His lips only stretched wider, slowly putting the oar down. Hanta, you better fucking not, you warned him. You had shifted to your knees at this point, hands holding onto both sides of the board. He slowly lowered himself until he was at eye level, that same shit-eating grin plastered on his face. Brace yourself. Nothing but a squeal left your mouth as Hanta grabbed the board, jerking his body to the side and bringing it, and you, along with him. The muffled splash reached your ears as you were submerged, the rush of cold water shooting through your body in a frigid sting. You quickly pushed yourself to the surface, where the sound of Hanta's laughter greeted you. You jerk! You exclaimed. But there was no anger in your voice. You smacked his arm as you laughed with him, to which Hanta pulled you to his chest. I told you not to! He gave you a light-hearted apology, his hair matted to his forehead as he flipped the board right side up. You didn't move for a moment, your hands resting on his chest while his free one sat on your waist. You felt the soft pulsing of his heartbeat just beneath your touch, and you heard him clear his throat as he lifted you from the water and onto the board. You felt it shift as he pulled himself out to sit beside you, shaking water from his hair like a wet dog. You can be an ass sometimes, you said, a pout on your lips as you wrung your hair dry. I know, but I did it because I wanted to cheer you up. He waded his legs through the water, sweeping loose strands away from his face. You've been kind of quiet since we got here. I just wanted to make sure you were okay. By flipping us over? He saw his cheeks erupt. Yeah, that probably wasn't one of my best ideas. Not at all, hun. Not at all. You shook your head, but you were nonetheless flattered. And you couldn't help but think he looked good like this. Water rolled down his skin like glass beads, lean muscles showing just how far he's come compared to his lanky stature in middle school. But he was more than just that. Beneath that beautiful figure was an even more beautiful heart, capable of bursting with so much love and affection for the people around him that you could drown in his smile alone. You know, my eyes are up here. His voice snapped you from your stupor, gaze darting back to his face. He was wiggling his brows teasingly, but his cheeks were glowing a brighter shade of red. Your cheeks involuntarily matched his when you realized he noticed your staring, and you shoved him out of embarrassment. Can you blame me? You muttered, looking off to the distance at your friends. You've grown a lot since we graduated. A lot of people compliment you, so it shouldn't be a surprise if I think you look good. You heard him fall silent for a moment, before he let out a soft chuckle. <laughs> Pure wanna talk. What you think of me matters the most, cariño. He spoke softly before a hand flew to his mouth. He didn't intend for you to hear that pet name, judging by the way he refused to meet your eyes, his ears lighting pink. But you did hear it, and you could feel your heart pound as a result. A part of you hoped he couldn't hear it, and he hoped you couldn't hear his own heart pounding too. Oh my god. You weren't prepared for thunder to suddenly strike, nearly dropping the cup you were holding. Your relaxing afternoon at the lake had to be cut short when you were hit by a sudden shower, which only fell harder by the time you got back home. You listened to the rain, 
watching your younger relatives dance around to Disney's Moana in the living room. Mina, Denki, and Eijiro were there with them, while Katsuki and Hanta helped your parents cook dinner. You were tasked with setting up a table with Mika. So, how's your thing with Hanta? She mumbled, quiet enough for only you to hear. You nearly dropped the cup again as you nudged her with your hip. What do you mean? You went to ask, but a sudden thought suddenly crossed your mind. Hey, wait. Aren't you going to tell me which one of those brats got us in this mess in the first place? You nodded your head towards the bouncing children. Nah, I'd rather not. You playfully rolled your eyes at Nika's refusal. Besides, you seem to be having a blast with your relationship. The need to correct her was on the tip of your tongue, and your eyes couldn't help but travel to the man on the other side of the room. It's as if he knew, turning his attention away from the stove to meet your gaze, and you resist the urge to smile when Hanta shot you a wink. That dork. It's a fake relationship, he told her, tearing your attention back to the dining table. Although, the way the words left your mouth sounded unsure and your cousin picked up on it. Right. She left you alone after that, leaving to retrieve more utensils while you set up the rest of the table. Meanwhile, Hanta was so occupied with stirring the broth that he almost jumped when your aunt appeared out of thin air. Oh, hello, miss. It's auntie to you, Hanta. She corrected, and he stumbled an apology. And I'm... Rather curious about something. Do you mind? He placed a lid over the pot, turning his attention to her. Not at all. What can I help with? You love my nibbling, don't you? Hanta's cheeks tinted pink. From the other side of the kitchen, he caught Katsuki eyeing him with a raised brow. A sigh left him, followed by a timid smile. Well, yeah. I've loved them since we were kids. Your aunt hummed, closing her eyes for a moment before speaking. And how much do you love them? He stopped for a moment, trying to find the correct words to do his feelings justice. He looked to you in the dining room, and a grin helplessly adorned his face. Someone would have to teach me all the languages in the world for me to find the proper words to describe just how much I love them." The words slipped past his lips before he realized, and he only noticed when he heard your aunt sigh in awe. He really needed to keep his mouth in check. I'm so glad you found each other, the woman said, taking his hands into hers in a form of gratitude. Hanta only smiled, but inside he felt a touch guilty. The group was leaving tomorrow. At some point, he would have to come clean that he wasn't in a relationship with you. But seeing the delighted expression of your aunt made him hesitate. Now you tell me when you plan on getting married, okay? Married? married? Hanta was taken aback, both by your aunt's statement and your own outburst. His mind went into overdrive. When sudden thoughts of you and him under the altar, with your friends and family surrounding you raided his mind, his breath being stolen from his lungs, when he realized he didn't hate the idea. Auntie! You were in the kitchen at this point, equally embarrassed as the man beside her. She turned to you with an innocent smile. What? I was just saying. It's too early for that, auntie. You cut her off obvious exasperation in your voice. Hanta and I will get there when we get there. You probably should have rephrased that, for Hanta stood frozen, face a bright shade of red you thought he was going to melt. Beside him was your aunt, whose face was lit up in giddy excitement. Oh, so you have considered it. Oh, you should have known she was going to pull the marriage card. She did it with your other cousins even with your cousin who was already engaged. And you should have told Hanta. The poor man nearly burned himself out of shock. You ushered your aunt out the kitchen to join your friends and the kids, turning back to Hanta with flustered cheeks. 
He had gone back to preparing dinner, but you saw his nervous habit of ruffling his hair as he stirred whatever was in the pot. You saw him turn to you, only to bite his lip and turn back when he caught your eye. Poor guy. Dinner went on for longer than you thought, finishing around 10 and playing just dance with your friends in the living room until past midnight. You had bid your family goodnight as some left for their respective homes, while your parents had retreated to their own room, wishing you and your friends a good rest. But that was hours ago. It was past two in the morning, and you were wide awake. Even with the familiar warmth of your childhood bedroom and the pitter-pattering of rain, you couldn't seem to sleep. With a sigh, you slowly rolled out of bed, careful not to disturb Mina beside you, as you quietly walked out of your room. You made your way down the stairs, and the pictures hung on the wall caught your attention. One was you on your first day of kindergarten, with that Winnie the Pooh themed backpack you loved. There was another, and this was you when you celebrated your birthday at school in sixth grade. You were surrounded by your friends in this one, and you had your arms around a certain boy with raven hair and eyes, and you smiled. The other photos that followed were the pinnacle moments of your life. Your first music recital, first school dance, your sports tournament, graduation, and another you recognized. It was you and Hanta in your senior year, dressed in formal clothes and arms around the other. Your attention wasn't directed at the camera, but at each other. And you looked... happy. Content. You laughed at yourself, remembering the conversation you had with Mina at the diner. There was no doubt. Hanta was your hero in more ways than one, and that made you grow more fond of the man. By the time you reached the bottom of the stairs, you were snapped from your reminiscent trance once you heard a voice echoing from outside. Curious, you approached the door, wondering who would be awake at almost three in the morning. You carefully pushed the door open, greeted by the cold chill of rain hitting the patio. The voice stopped for a moment, Hanta staring at you in surprise. Hey. He greets, voice raspy. You greet back, asking why he was still awake. Thought I could take a quick shower before going back to bed. You let out a breathy laugh, and he chuckled in response. What's the real reason you're out here, hun? You joined him in standing on the patio, drops of rain hitting your skin. He sighed. I'm just... thinking about what your aunt said. You know, the whole marriage thing. Yeah, about that. You instantly jumped in, cheeks going pink. Sorry, I should have told you about that sooner. Just forget about it. Silence lingered between you for a while, before another sigh escaped your best friend. You heard the wood beneath you creak as he turned to face you, a hand outstretched. You wordlessly raised a brow, and he laughed. <laughs> Just... humor me. That was when you heard Ed Sheeran's perfect play from his phone, and a smile helplessly creeped onto your face. You and Hanta had a joke about it being your song after having coincidentally played during your 18th birthday and senior banquet, where you danced with him both times. With a hand resting on his, he slowly pulled you into him, and your hand naturally found itself on his shoulder. He swayed you in a gentle, back-and-forth motion, occasionally humming with the song, his deep voice resonating in your ears that made your heart flutter. The world around you slowly began to fade, each step you took with him matching the rhythm of your heartbeat. Do you remember? He whispered. Back in second grade, when I told you I was in love with you, and we said we were going to marry each other when we got older. Hanta! You exclaimed, slapping his chest at the memory. We were six! His shoulders bounced in laughter, pulling you closer so you're flush against him. I know, I know. But... He stopped swaying you. Hun? 
He leaned his forehead against yours. What if we did? You looked up, and you were surprised when Raven eyes bore through yours. His breath brushed against your face in an almost tantalizing manner, both hands now resting on your waist. He uttered your name like a prayer, as if he wasn't even worthy to say it, giving your waist a gentle squeeze. Over the last two decades you've known him, this was the first time you had ever seen him like this. Eyes glazed over with an unrecognizable emotion that had your heart thundering. The feeling was contagious, blocking out the cold of the rain with an overwhelming warmth, his hand moving to glide against your cheek. You let him, leaning into his touch in a dazed stupor. He spoke your name again, and you uttered his name in response. With eyes focused on carefully parted lips, you slowly inched towards him, and he did the same. Was this okay? Did he want this as much as you did? What will happen if you pull away? Will you only remain friends? Questions ran through your minds like a tidal wave, but everything was washed away by the sweet scent of citrus. He was intoxicating and you couldn't think of being anywhere else but here. With him. With nothing but the rain to witness this moment shared by lost hearts woven together. Just for tonight. Just for tonight. <laughs>